No, you, you can't just drag people into the shop. No, he says not dragging them in, Granville. It's more propelling them in this direction as if by accident, you see. Ooh. All right, show me. Oh, Granville, you've, you've seen me do it often enough. No, I haven't. I've always been too embarrassed to watch. No, <laughs> this is not a case of embarrassment. It's a test of skill. Well, I hope this section never gets published in my biography. No, I'm warning you, if ever I become famous, well, one day, I want absolutely no reference to this. I see. It's ashamed of it, are you? Well, let us just say that I would prefer to gloss over this period of my life with a simple paragraph that reads, uh, For a while, he was employed in a minor executive capacity in a commercial enterprise. <laughs> hey, what happens if they're bigger than me, eh? like him? Well, you're not, not going to wrestle with him, are you? All you're going to do is use a bit of psychology on him. Oh, we're well, going and show me. Oh, Granville, it's, it's simple enough. Look, I'll show you this last once, and then it's your turn, all right? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to try on something a little bit smaller. Oh, don't be <laughs> silly. The bigger they are, the harder they spend. Now, listen, pay attention. Make sure that he is going to pass the shop, because if he's going to come in anyway, you're, you're wasting your time, aren't you? Yeah, no, it's too late. Once they pass the shop, because he'd be round the corner and away, wouldn't he? It's never too late. You catch him at the warehouse door as they go past the back, don't you? <laughs> you go out, I'll show you, you go out there, and if he goes round the corner, say, stamp your foot. Stamp me foot? Yeah, you know, you know what stamping your foot is. Like oh. that. <laughs> Missed him. <laughs> Obviously missed him. Oh. <laughs> One thing I hate, it's grit in the eye. Even the tiniest speck feels like a dormer bungalow. You want to wet the corner of your handkerchief? Oh. I can't see anything. Oh, don't well. It must be catching. Don't tell me you're going blind and all. <laughs> Sometimes if you bring your top down and uh, waggle the bottom. Who do you think I am? A gypsy Rosalie? <laughs> oh, hey, it works. It's gone, Granville. Oh, it's gone. Oh, what a relief. Oh, <laughs> oh that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, and now what can we give this a nice young gentleman to show our appreciation? Give? Oh, give over. You don't have to give me anything. You do the same for me. Oh, too proud, you see, to accept charity, Granville. Well, put it this way, what little bargains can we put him on to, to uh, show our appreciation, eh? <laughs> so there we are, sir. <laughs> <laughs> A compliment of the management, sir. Oh, you've been very good. How delightful. Oh, always a pleasure to see a new face. Oh, I never knew this still existed. What, new faces? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, you find them just underneath new people's hats. You know. <laughs> no, not new faces. Oh. No, these places. Pokey little shops. <laughs> <laughs> Piddledy, all scrunched in. <laughs> Quaint. Oh, good. You really think so? Oh, definitely. Oh, good, because that was just the effect we were, were striving after, you know. <laughs> oh, yes. I remember saying to the architect, now, look, Sir Hugh, I said, we, uh, we don't want any of this in my modern rubbish. We'll go strictly for Quaint. Oh, love the smell. What is it, do you think? Well, you've uh, come on a bad day, you see. We get a lot of old people in here on a Tuesday. <laughs> 
Which is uh, fine, unless it's been raining and then some of them smell, smell a bit damp, you know. I think it's cough drops, tobacco and paraffin. That's right, and that's only the women. <laughs> I, uh, see you're still selling things unwrapped. That's a, a vicious rumour, madam. I've never even appeared in the shop unwrapped. <laughs> tempting little cakes. I might have risked a couple had you had some tongs. Don't you use tongs? Of course we use tongs, madam. Oh, I am notorious uh, on the tongs, but usually I just save them for the summer months, you see, because they are marvellous instruments for swatting flies. <laughs> Look at that. Another pregnant female. There we are. Which cake did you want? One of those did you want or one of those? No, no thank you. No, oh, dear. I don't think so. Oh, a bit of cream's all over it. <laughs> really, I only came in looking for French cigarettes. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I don't suppose you have any French cigarettes. No, but we have English ones you can smoke with a foreign accent. <laughs> I only smoke the French. Best thing that could happen to them. <laughs> oh, I remember a shop like this when I was a child. Yes, yes, so do I. This is it. <laughs> I suppose it's long since been condemned. Well, as a matter of actual fact, we are on the very verge of the same thing ourselves, you know. Really? Oh, yes, on account of the frats. The frats? Yes. Oh, they're everywhere, you know. They get under your skirting boards and your floorboards, into your cavity walls. My God, you've had it if they get into your cavity walls, you know. I'm surprised a property of this age has cavity walls. Well, we didn't have cavity walls till the damn frats got in, you see. <laughs> These frats. Frats? Oh, they are a nasty cross between a ferret and a rat. A ferret and a rat? Yes. And do they interbreed? Into, do they? That's all they ever do do, night and day. <laughs> oh, it only takes a jiffy, they tell me. Actually, it happened first by accident when two of the little creatures tried to force themselves through the same narrow aperture, you know, and uh, <laughs> like that, you see. Well, of course, once having got the knack, <laughs> yes, oh, yes. Yes, the knack of, uh, of producing frats, or as we say locally, uh, fraternisation. And um, you have them here? Oh, we've got them everywhere. They're spreading like wild frats. <laughs> but surely if there was an epidemic, I mean, the health authorities would no, be... No, 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 no. They don't they to risk a panic, you see. Oh, no. They just send someone along who uh, bore a, a couple of holes in your walls and uh, tell, you, tell you you've got nothing. You see... <laughs> The trouble is, officially, the, the problem there doesn't exist. But what does one do? One acquires a frat detector. Something that burns economically on a low light, a little pleasant yellow flame which turns green the moment the frats appear. That's one. <laughs> Have you got any solid ground? for these suppositions about me mother. There's plenty of solid ground round here that your mother gave rise to suppositions on. <laughs> Mainly they're down by the canal. That's pure guesswork. No, I don't think so. Not with the amount of her fresh fish she brought home of an evening. <laughs> Rubbish. Anyway, anyway, if I was half Hungarian, why wouldn't she call me Granville? Huh? Perhaps your the top half is called Granville. I mean, looking at that bottom half, it could be called any of the damn thing, that. It probably answers to some name like a Hugo. Well, there's a novelty. This is a great day for personal discoveries. My mother was the fisherman's friend and I got a bottom half called Hugo. Oh, don't Hugo, Hugo. I'll go. <laughs> well, uh, come in. Uh, don't be hesitant. Everything's for sale. Oh, no, I don't want anything. I was just passing and I've noticed you spelt your sign incorrectly. <laughs> Well, would you believe it? Forty years in grocery and provisions, and then suddenly this her head comes round the door, just a head, mind you, and starts correcting your spelling. Have you anything to su substantiate these charges? Oh, come and have a look. You've spelt special with a whore. <laughs> well, with a whore? <laughs> what sort of a damn fool was spelled special with a whore? Oh. <laughs> you do feel a fool, don't you? <laughs> I noticed it as soon as I turned corner. Yes, yeah, you've got very sharp eyes, you have. Well, I suppose that's true. And I've always got my head in a book. Yeah. I think that with a proper schooling, I could be even more important than I am now. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, I think if I'm not careful, you're going to turn out to be one of those eagle-eyed customers who, before I can say, yes, 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 Jack, uh, 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 before I can, before I can say, uh, 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 say, say, uh, Jack, uh, uh, Jack, uh, uh, Jack, uh, before I can say, uh, Ron Micklethwaite. <laughs> You are going to be uh, spotting all my little bargains, aren't you? And, and cleaning me out of profits for the week. What did you move then? When? Just then, you moved that tin. I moved that tin? It was over here. Uh, <laughs> I can't keep anything from you, can I? <laughs> I thought, hello, what's he doing hiding that tin? <laughs> Baked beans. Yes. It's spelt correctly, is it? <laughs> oh, it's spelt correctly. Why would anybody hide an everyday tin of baked beans? Ah, oh, well, now, let's get this straight. They're only that price temporarily for people who come in here with a regular weekly order. I can't go giving them away at that price to any... There's a strange spelling freak that comes in off the street. <laughs> What price should they be? Ah, now I've noticed that about people who've always got their heads in books. They seldom know the price of baked beans. <laughs> That's the wife's department, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I bet you don't know the prices of a whole range of simple commodities. <laughs> I know you don't spell special with a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Right, here you go. Can you manage? That's the idea. <laughs> well done, and you certainly have been. <laughs> Cheerio, with two E's. I'll take two ounces. Right. You don't need so much now there's no man in the house. No, no, I suppose not. Not in quantity, no. Still, now you should be uh, spoiling yourself for a few little uh, luxury items. Not you know. after a lifetime scrimping and saving. Oh, well, uh, put it this way. After a lifetime of uh, scrimping and saving, you should be able to afford a few little luxury items. Oh, I've got a bit tucked away. Yes. You can keep it tucked away, Mrs. <laughs> I intend to. Yes, I can, I can tell that by your expression. And, of course, I had him insured. It brought me a lump sum. Oh, yes, it's very sad. Brings a lump sum to the throat, doesn't it? I suppose financially I've never been as well off. No, that's true, of course, that's very true. But mind you, how long will it last if you keep uh, lashing out on two ounces of corned beef like this? I shall continue living simply. Oh, you've no idea how that sort of common sense warms the heart of a shopkeeper. Mm. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know. It's lovely when it all quietens down. There we are, Mrs. Burford. Oh, dear. Well, don't tiptoe about there, Granville. Come in. What in a hangman have you got there? That is a bargain. It's dripping oil, your bargain. Oh, good Granville. Fetch your cost dripping in front of a lady. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. What's wrong with that thing? What does he want? I don't know what he wants. Who can they tell at his age? Only last week I caught him sneaking off with an entire uh, ginger cake, you know. A ginger cake? Oh, yes. We've got a new batch in. It's irresistible. <laughs> All it needs is a new clutch. And uh, <laughs> a few more raisins. He's right. <laughs> now, listen, Granville. I hate to criticise, but in this subdued light, this looks like an old, old lawnmower. Yes, it is a lawnmower. <laughs> Aren't we overlooking something, uh, Mr Thrower? We haven't got a flaming lawn. <laughs> oh, no, we haven't got a lawn. <laughs> I've, I've raised a buyer. All these years I've been trying to bring him up as a seller, and now he turns out to be a, a, a buyer. <laughs> I bought it for the engine. Oh. I'm going to fix it to the shop bike. Oh, oh, oh. Morning, Mr. Arkwright. Good morning, Bert. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at all them uh, uh, poor buns, look. That's ingenious. I'm over just inside the doorway. Makes you wonder why other shops haven't thought of that. <laughs> Should we make sure he's all right? Granville. First thing to do in case of an accident is to consider the, the legal position, which is quite plain on first principles. What principles? Deny all responsibility. 
Well, he comes about bouncing in here, uh, kicking an old lawnmower in off the street. Off the street? It was in here. Now, who in their right mind would uh, leave a lawnmower in here? It was in here. What, an old mower? I walked through that door and... Woof! I'm going before we get to needing witnesses round here. Your anvil, don't touch that bun. Never touched it. Never touched it. Once we touch that bun, we have accepted a delivery. And uh, what we are going to do with a load of all the uh, damaged buns that have been all over this filthy floor, I don't know. They were not damaged buns when I came in here. I understand that, Bert. I realise your predicament. Let's have a, ch a chat about it outside, Predicament? Shall we? What predicament? Well, you're going to have a devil of a job trying to get an offer for them old buns now, aren't you? <laughs> don't hang about, Granville. Start picking up our buns. I thought you said they weren't our buns. They will be in a minute, you barn pot. <laughs> Are you keeping Granville? <laughs> oh, hi, Wendy. You going my way? Am I going her way? its mouth is going to get a kick up the sprockets. <laughs> Granville is at present getting ready for a little trip on the new reconditioned shop bike, aren't you, Granville? Who is? No, you're never going to get me on that shop bike ever again. Oh, all right then. I'll, I'll go go on myself. Hmm. I might even uh, take in Atkinson Terrace. Remember Atkinson Terrace, do you? Where the late Mr. Featherstone used to get his uh, used to visit uh, twice a week. <laughs> I never knew the late Mr. Featherstone used to visit Atkinson Terrace. Oh, yes, mind you, he was never the late Mr. Featherstone there. <laughs> what number, Atkinson Terrace? Atkinson Terrace? Oh, is that an echo? Oh. <laughs> Would that be the Atkinson Terrace I'm thinking about? Well, I must go. I've got three open wounds and something septic to see to. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like the Labour Party conference. <laughs> What about Atkinson Terrace? Uh, yes. Well, uh, my friends and I were wondering uh, just how far one could get on the new reconditioned uh, uh, shop a bicycle. Uh, Granville, fetch my hat, would you? Uh, my uh, sceptical friend there and my uh, sceptic friend here, <laughs> they decided that we couldn't uh, reach uh, Atkinson Terrace, but I've determined to, to prove them wrong. What, that old bike? Why don't you get him a new one? Oh, no, it's the hair overheads, you see. Oh, th thank you, Granville. Why do you want your hat, anyway? Oh, you can never be seen without a hat in, in Atkinson Terrace. <laughs> uh, trousers, possibly. <laughs> but just a minute. 
Before anybody else goes, I'd like to know just what it was you were discussing about Atkinson Terrace. <clears throat> what number Atkinson Terrace would that be, Mrs Featherstone? Never you mind what number that might be. The Grand Valier to come and see this or not? Aye, well, well, come in. <clears throat> I'm g going to start on low level ground. <laughs> I'll to show you who can reach Atkinson to Terrace. <laughs> See, no squeak. Your front wheel looks loose. Robert. <laughs> Some terrace. <laughs> 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 